Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo. And it is time for week three in season two of the Pokemon Premier League. This week, the Victorian Shadows are going up against Q, Q. the Costa Rican coach of the Chicago Pulse. Naturally? Naturally. Who? Naturally. 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 There will be a team builder. If you would like to skip that, there will be a little link to skip over to the battle. And I have put the link to Q's channel in the description as well. It is very likely that you are already aware of who Q the Costa Rican is. I highly recommend that you check out his content, especially involved around battle spot singles. This player has some very entertaining fire sets that are just full of creativity and it made the preparation for this match especially thoughtful on my end. Now that I'm feeling much better after last week's, um, what do we say? I'm just going to call it a debacle. Well, maybe you should be better at controlling me. How's this for better? <laughs> Dude, stop. I'm getting breakfast in my brain. I have stopped. I think the crouch button's stuck. Well, fix it, or we'll never get the high school. Oh, man, you crashed. Reboot. See, what happened was... See, what had happened at first was... I wasn't playing with the Blood Red controller. You all see the things that we're trying to summon during the season, and it's really my fault. I'm over here going, Sir William Bullion. That is not what I should have done. Billiam has been thoroughly punished... Who's Billy? ...for bringing me the wrong controller, the one that had this, the, the stick drift. And, um... Shroom? You won't ever have to worry about that again, just in case you're watching this here. So, back to normal on that front, and uh, let's get into the team builder. So on this team here, for the matchup, we can see that Q the Costa Rican has access to Tarapagos, Miascarada, Goldengo, Comfey, Galarian Zapdos, Tentacruel, Hitmontop, Mudsdale, Electros, and Reuniclus. His Terra Captains are Comfey, which can Terra into Fairy, steel or water and the hitmon top which can go fighting ice or dark in this matchup he has so many options uh for those of you who aren't um, as familiar with the newer pokemon terapagos its ability makes it so that if it's at full hp the first hit that hits it to take it out of full hp is always not very effective functionally it's like a better multi-scale um, so that's just an incredible ability. Pair that alongside his Miascarada, which is faster than everything on my team, and um, the Goldengo, which can hit a lot of my team with Steel-type moves. And we have an interesting matchup. How do we prepare for this? So right away, I noticed that Dodrio has a great matchup here. There is nothing on his team, bar the Electros, that can take a flying type move very well. Um, Mudsdale can take those physical hits, but if I tear a flying into a flying type, then I'll be doing even more damage. So I went with Dodrio with Brave Bird, Knock Off, Low Kick, and Swords Dance. Um, Knock Off is really just there to throw off possibly early. It's my best way to hit the Goldango, so I was required to bring it. Um, but Knock Off and Terra Flying Brave Bird will do similar damage, uh, especially if he doesn't have an item, then Brave Bird will do more damage. I'm going with Protective Pads, Jolly, Max Attack and Max Speed here, just to make sure that I'll speed everything. Protective Pads will help me out in case I hit something that has a Rocky Helmet, such as the um, Hitmontop carrying Rocky Helmet or the Mudsdale carrying a Rocky Helmet. It'll also help out uh, for just any kind of secondary annoying um, held items that I'm, I'm not really foreseeing there. With Venusaur, he's our second Pokemon that we're bringing this week. You can see there on the screen that I have a Venusaur, Rocking Sludge Bomb, Earthquake, Knock Off, and Giga Drain. And I have almost max HP investment and max special attack with four in attack but I brought a neutral nature. I brought a serious natured Venusaur. This is actually the first time I've actually ever used a neutral nature. 
with the natures, usually you want to boost one stat or you want to, um, you know, not uh, to lower a stat that you're not going to use. Here, Venusaur needs everything. I need maximum defense. I need maximum special defense. I need all my attack, special attack, and my speed in this matchup. If I don't have, uh, for example, and I'll show you why I did this, if Venusaur goes with a minus defense nature, Hitmontop can very easily KO with a triple axle. But if I don't go minus defense nature, I live the triple axle unless he's like an offensive Hitmontop. Same thing applies to Miascarada. Uh, if I'm max HP and I'm not lowered in defense, if he runs like a Scarf or Abandoned Miascarada, I can take hits bar the triple axle really well. Um, if I have my attack not lowered by any nature, then a knockoff into Earthquake will KO the Goldengo and the Tentacruel. Uh, I also needed all these moves to cover for any option that Comfey would Terra type into, because if it stays Fairy, Sludge Bomb works. But if it goes Steel, I need Ground type moves. And if it goes Water, I'm going back to my Grass type moves. So I needed every single move, and I needed every single stat on Venusaur. Without any speed investment, it still outspeeds the entire team and Sun, and I'm using the Life Orb here to pick up my Venusaur's damage. Up next is Walking Wake. I went with Timid 184 speed investment with max uh, special attack, just so that way I can always outspeed maximum speed Zapdos. And I actually went all in on the special attack because I'm gonna give it a choice specs and make sure that that special attack is boosted up as much as possible in the off chance that I need to hit Terrapicos with a really, really strong hit. So on top of the specs, if the sun is up, my protosynthesis is going to raise my special attack as well, turning it into a very, very damaging um, beast, shall we say, in this matchup. Um, the moves on the Walking Wake, of course, are going to be Hydro Steam, Draco Meteor, Flamethrower, and Dragon Pulse. After Walking Wake, we have Clefable. This is this one, along with my Galarian Slowking, have the potential to be um, win conditions this week. So they're both running their stab move alongside a coverage move, recovery and calm mind. Clefable has Moonblast, Flamethrower, um, Calm Mind, and Moonlight. And it's running unaware with uh, Leftovers, and it's there to switch into the Mudsdale, the Hitmontop, and the Electros. Uh, it can also, with Unaware, counter any setup from the Terrapagos, Reuniclus, or Electros. It can set up right alongside them. And it helps me have a decent answer if Zapdos is running bulk up. Galarian Slowking is running Slack Off, Calm Mine, Psy Shock, and Flamethrower, because once again, it can set up alongside the Terrapagos or possibly something like the Comfey, depending on what he's trying to do. And with Psy Shock and Flamethrower, I get perfect coverage against his whole team. Um, with the Galarian Slowking, I just went with max HP, max special defense, because I wanted it to be more of a special type swap in. And then with Clefable, I went with max HP, max defense, so that I can swap in on those physical, um, physically offensive mods. The final Pokemon of the team this week is Torkoal. And he's actually running a calm nature with special defense investment, max HP, max special defense. And on it, I have Lava Plume, Yawn, Stealth Rocks, and Scorching Sands with a Heat Rock. This is my dedicated swap in into the Gold Dango just so I can gather information about it because it ensures that I can take um, the Make It Rain from Gold Dango. And if he is using Shadow Ball, I can always take um, a couple of Shadow Balls as well. Scorching Sands is just there so that I'm not walled by the Tentacruel. And this gives me an answer to Moltres which was another reason why I was running protective pads on my Dodrio. If I touch Moltres with a contact move, then Flame Body could activate and burn my Dodrio, and I didn't want to deal with that. So that is the team for the week. Our horde is looking primed and ready to conquer. In case you are just jumping in here before the battle, this week we are running max attack, um, max speed Dodrio with protective pads, we're running a neutral nature Venusaur because we need every single stat on it with Sludge Bomb, Earthquake, Knock Off, and Giga Drain. We went with the Life Orb and a lot of HP and Special Attack just because without any investment, I can still outspeed the whole team. Whereas Dodrio has Low Kick, Brave Bird, Knock Off, and Sword Stance. 
Walking Wake has enough speed for Zapdos, and then after that everything in on that special attack with even the Protosynthesis boost, boosting my special attack with choice specs for as much damage as possible. Clefable is max HP, max defense, with Unaware and Leftovers to allow it to swap in against things like Mudsdale, Hitmon, Top, and Electros, with Moonblast, Calm Mind, Moonlight, and Flamethrower. Galarian Slowking is max HP, max special defense, with Slack Off, Calm Mind, Psyshock, and Flamethrower to form a little bit of a Calm Mind bulky core with Clefable. Finally, we have a specially defensive Torkoal, just here to be my dedicated swap into Goldango because that thing can ruin my team. Three times in a row I attempted to record this next part, and three times in a row I did it with my microphone muted because double clicking is not always your friend. Anyways, here we can see that Q has brought Tropagos, Meowskarada, Goldango, Comfey, Tentacruel, and the Mudsdale. I was very surprised here by the last three. I was not too surprised by the first three. From what I have noticed from how people usually play Tropagos, they throw heavy duty boots on it and leave it in the back. Just has a little insurance policy. So here I did want to get up the Stealth Rocks as soon as possible because I felt pretty confident that I could force his spinner out. We decided to lead Galarian Slowking because it has a good matchup against everything here. With the Colberberry to take on the Dark Moves from the Meowskarada, I can flame throw it back. I don't want to lead Galarian Slowking in against the Goldango. That would necessitate a swap out to my Torkoal immediately. That is the only thing that I would really swap out against though. Everything else is getting hit by a coverage move. If he led Comfey and Terra immediately, that would be annoying too. So having Galarian Slowking out here in the front. Uh, also, I've brought Toxic Spikes on it several times. And so I, I figured that he would expect that. He did surprise me by leading with Tentacruel. And so I was like, great, we're just gonna stay here and see what this thing has. And that means we're just going to go straight for that Psy Shock, because the Tentacruel is literally the reason I put Psy Shock on my Galarian Slowking. He does burn my Culverberry very early, but that's also okay to an extent because if I don't have an item, the Meowskarada using knockoff will not do as much damage as if it were knocking off an item. So I'll be able to take that a little bit better, unless it's Choice Bandit, in which case it could two hit KO me from this range. Now here, I thought the next Psy Shock was way too obvious given that he has swap ends to Golden Go or Meowskarada, but he just stays in and clicks Toxic Spikes, which I didn't predict either given that I brought two poison types with me. Um, so that was just a complete misprediction. I do get a, a burn, which doesn't really matter because it's offset here by the uh, Black Sludge that he has, and he's faster than me. So if he wants to put up more spikes or do anything else, he's gonna get to do it anyway. And even without the burn, I could have always two hit KO'd him with Psy Shock. I did contemplate going for Calm Mind here, but I did figure it was too early and that would just bait in something like the Meowskarada if it were banded to come in and just smack me. He gets a little bit more chip damage with knockoff, which of course is lowered by the burned um, status. And then we're able to take the first KO of the match. Now in between turns here, I was doing a lot of calcs because I was like, ooh, if he, I feel like he's gonna bring in the Meowskarada and then he does. I was like, is he banded? Is he life orbed? If he's either of those things, my slow king is dead. And I don't want that to happen. I was worried about swapping out on uh, like a triple axle or a U-turn here, but I figured he would go for a knockoff if he were a banded or, or, or life orb. And he does go for a knockoff as I swap into Venusaur. But when I was running the calcs, that did not look like banded damage and he does not take life orb recoil. And so I assumed that he could swap moves at this point. And so I went out to my Torkoal immediately expecting uh, an ice boof, namely Triple Axel. Uh, Torkoal could take that very, very easily and take any follow-up hits as well. But he just goes for knockoff again. And then that's when I started to get an inkling. Is he scarfed expecting my walking wake to be boosted by speed and the sun? That would make a lot of sense. And so from this point, I did assume that he was a choice scarf me Oscarada. Now that my Torkoal is in, we're sticking to the original game plan and I'm just going to get up rocks right now. And this is a really good timing because even though he knocked off the heat rock, that means I have seven more turns of sun to take advantage of. And I have two Pokemon that can take advantage of those. And my Clefable gets boosted healing for those turns if I end up bringing it in too. 
since he brought Mudsdale in on Torkoal the way that he did, I assumed that he was going to set up his rocks. And so I was like, all right, I can get Venusaur in and I can get some HP back with Giga Drain. It's going to be great. But he goes for Earthquake. And I was like, that's no big deal. My Venusaur can live it unless he's invested. And my Venusaur just drops. I was really sad to see that because he had to have been attack invested to KO Venusaur. Since I didn't have uh, a defense lowering nature, there was no way an Earthquake was KOing my Venusaur. He had to have some investment there. With Venusaur Sacrifice though, we do get to go out into my choice specs, Walking Wake in the sun. Something is going to get hurt here. I wanted, I desired so badly to go for the Draco Meteor, but I could not do that because he had Comfey in the back. And I can always swap in and take advantage and set up on me uh, if I'm locked in a Draco Meteor, or you could just swap it in raw, and then I would have wasted my turn. The next best move could have been Flamethrower, but since I, I was thinking, is he Choice Bandit? Is that the only way he killed my Venusaur? And I didn't want to use Flamethrower because that would fail to kill the Mudsdale. So I went for the the in-between move here, which is Hydro Steam in the Sun. And that does a lot of damage to the Meowskarada for it resisting that move. If Meowskarada were slower than me, I would stay in here. But now I, I'm thinking that he's Scarf, especially because he brought it straight in on my Walking Wake after he saw the special attack boost from Protosynthesis. So thinking he was just going to go for Flower Trick or Knock Off, I go back onto my Galarian Slow King. But he surprises me with the play rough, so it's really good that I didn't stay in there. Walking Wake could have taken a knockoff or a flower trick, but Play Rough would have done a substantial amount of damage if not KOing me uh, outright. So with Glarian Sloking in here, and now I am definitely thinking this is Scarfed, that means that I can throw off a coverage move or I can double out. Here, I was between the two. I figured he might go into Mudsdale or Goldango. And so I ended up going for Flamethrower because right now it's Sun Boosted. That would finish off the Meowskarada and it would do a decent amount of damage to the Mudsdale swapping in. And on top of all that, if he decided to go into Goldango, expecting the Psychic type coverage move for some reason, he hasn't seen all my moves yet. So I, this was just the best move all around for me to go for. Another move I could have made here would have been to double back to my Walking Wake because there substantially is no way that he would have just stayed in there and play rough again. But uh, we just stayed in and went for that flamethrower, and that does a good chunk for me not having any special attack investment outside of my modest nature uh, to this Pokemon. So I bring in my Clefable, thinking he's going to go for Earthquake. And here I was like, is this, is it soft sand? Is it banded? I, I really wasn't sure what investment he had based off of the rolls I was getting. And I was getting kind of confused, and it was making me kind of try to, I, I don't run a lot of calcs during battle. <laughs> I like to just focus on the battle because when I run calcs, I forget stuff and I miss things. And so I was just like looking at the the damage and I was like, okay, let's see if he's banded. If he's banded, he'll go for Earthquake again. And so I went for Moonlight. I get all my HP back and then he heavy slams. And I was like, yay, he's not banded. Oh no, heavy slam. So heavy slam does way more damage than Earthquake. <laughs> but now I know he's not banded, which helps me out substantially and just understanding what he can go for. Thinking that he would expect me to swap here, I decide to go for an aggressive play and go into Dodrion, what I was going to hope was either Stealth Rocks or Earthquake. But he goes for Heavy Slam again, just really wanting to put my Clefable into the ground. Uh, Dodrio can take that, um, but now I didn't want to risk another aggressive switch, and so I just went for Terra Flying Brave Bird. He got a plus one defense earlier from using Flamethrower, and so I knew this wouldn't KO, but I was also afraid of just there's no reason for me to put myself in a, in a bad position by going into Torkoal on an earthquake, expecting the heavy slam. Like, why am I making these these guesses? Let's just hit what's in front of us because if I can remove this Mudsdale, it makes my Galarian Slow King's job much easier. Until I can get rid of this thing, um, since I lost Venusaur already, I, I just don't see me setting up with either my Clefable or my Galarian Slow King. So we just decided to hit it really hard. Thank you so much, Dodrio, for, for knocking into range there. And now if he's some sort of weird, specially defensive thing, I don't have to worry about the damage, but he really took me off guard here with the Custat Berry. And I was correct there to kind of anticipate a lot of damage from that Earthquake. 
not staying in on the muds there earlier was the play because look at how much that earthquake did. But man, if I had gotten off a knockoff with Venusaur or something like that, that would have been great to take care of that Custap Berry. But that earthquake did so much damage. I was just, I was impressed and also dismayed. But earthquakes are tearing open the ground and it's a natural disaster. So what do you expect here? So it goes out into the Miascarada, but now after that earthquake, I am absolutely in range of a knockoff or a flower trick. And he, as much as it's a 50-50 for me to guess, guess what move he's going to go for, it's also a 50-50 for him to get it right, uh, depending on what coverage he had. So here I did go back out into Torkoal, thinking that he would just go for a knockoff, uh, cause that's the safest move and he does. And Torkoal doesn't have an item anymore. So I could take this really well. It also gets the sun back up and that positions me so that I can hopefully get my HP back on my Clefable or of course throw off really, really powerful attacks. Um, and since he hasn't set up any rocks of his own and now he can't, I can really save Torkoal for a defensive pivot. You're just gonna go straight for a Lava Plume and he just stays in and goes for a knockoff to get as much damage as possible. And the Lava Plume evaporated the Miascarada uh, in the sun with that little HP. It didn't knock it out, it just evaporated because apparently my Sony Vegas just glitched and that's what's going to happen. So he goes out to the Comfey on my Torkoal and I was really worried about him setting up. And I was like, should I try to guess what he's going to Terra into? No, let's just assume he's going to Terra water here because Terra still doesn't make sense versus a Sunsteam. So he could either be fairy or water and water is just really annoying for me to go up against. And so I decide to go out back to my Galarian Slowking. After the Regenerator, I am at maximum HP, and it is time for us to see what he has teared into. So he has chosen the Terra type Water, which means that I made the right call going out into Slowking, and then I wanted to see what he was gonna go for here, because I was really going to determine the next few plays. And since he's gonna go for Calm Mind, it's time. We're gonna have a nice, just Calm Mind session calm mind wars 1v1 here it's basically a race to the crit um i do know that without any crits my galarian slow king wins this matchup because i have psy shock and psy shock hits him on the physical side whereas he is boosting his special defense uh, and he knows that so i'm assuming he had stored power since he was setting up and since he's using stored power i can at least offset some of that damage with my calm minds as well I don't want you all to sit here and just watch this boosting war. And so let's embark on a whimsical journey into the mystical realm of relaxation and laughter. Find a comfy spot, close your eyes and imagine you're surrounded by nothing of the ghosts of your enemies, mischievous, but friendly spirits. The ones you might invite to a, a seance or a Ouija board meeting just to get a little bit of clarity and clearance in, in the end of their days. Take a deep breath in. Do you feel that? Your lungs filling with air, vitality, and life? Let it go. Take another breath. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Hold it this time. Take that breath in and hold it for just a moment, then exhale. Repeat that for a few breaths. Focus on the sensation of each inhale and exhale. Picture a Galarian Slow King doing the cha-cha slide in the corner of your mind. Can you see him groove? Can you see him as he one-shots this Comfey with Psy Shock after setting up? Man. It was great. Back to the battle. I hope you all enjoyed a little bit of a guided meditation there. After we take out the Comfey, in comes Golden Go. But now that I have plus three or plus two special defense and plus three special attack, I'm not worried about this thing being specs. Uh, I was worried about it trying to trick me a scarf or something. And so instead of continuing to set up, we're just gonna go straight for the flamethrower. Um, he could critical hit me, of course, through my boost, but I didn't have any reason to swap out. He does go for light screen, which makes sense because his last remaining Pokemon is Terrapagos in the back. 
and that would really bolster Tarabagos' defenses against me. Of course, remember, Light Screen only helps against Flamethrower. Psyshock is going to hit on that physical side. But here, even after the Light Screen, with plus three special attack, this is a very easy two hit KO. So it really comes down to what secondary move he wants to go for here. And we're not risking getting stuck with uh, a light clear or anything weird like that either. And he just goes for Shadow Ball. And that does not do very much damage at all. There it is. That's that's that um, minus two special or yeah, minus one special defense, which puts me at two versus three special attack. There we go. I can do math. I promise I can do it. It all starts up here in the brain. Where are you relaxing? <sighs> Exhale any stress. Imagine it transforming into a balloon animal. And those balloon animals are created by Blacephalon. Those balloon animals explode, leaving your mind blown. My mind was blown watching Tarapagos come in here and take stealth rock damage because that means that he does not have his Terra Shell ability, and that means we get to do normal damage with this Psy Shock here. He goes straight for Terra Star Storm, and because of the Calm Minds, this does not do anything. And then that means, great, we're in range here. Based off of that Psy Shock damage, he is definitely defensively invested, and I did not want to risk anything, and so I went straight for that Slack Off just in case to get back up to a, a decent amount of HP before returning to the Psy Shock action. Now, if all things go well, this means that this battle will be over because he will not be able to outlast my Galarian Slow King at the end of this battle. We just need one more Psy Shock. Ah, oh, man. I have to say, having this battle end like this was such mixed feelings because I had a, I had a good battle against Q and I think I brought weird things that he didn't necessarily expect for the matchup. But I was so excited to battle Q, and I think I have this feeling for everyone this season. <laughs> I'm just so psyched for all my battles, and it's it's just it makes it really, really important to feel the levity in your air with each breath, as if your lungs are hosting a stand-up comedy show for Arceus. Breathe in and breathe out. Just. Get that awareness for the next few minutes, allowing yourself to be fully present in the simple act of breathing. As we conclude, take a final deep breath, gradually bringing your awareness back to the surroundings and how grounded you are in this moment with me right here. Open your eyes when you're ready. And when you open those eyes, carry this darkness with you, knowing you've shared a little moment with me here in the shadows on our first victory of the season. And while I'm so happy that you're here to watch this, I'm also really happy that you let a little bit of the darkness inside of you, because that's where it starts, just a little bit just an inkling and then as it warms its way deep into your psyche you would be so surprised at all the things that you can accomplish just by giving in to the power inside of you so thank you all for watching Q thank you for the battle sir and I implore you all please go check out Q the Costa Ricans channel and make sure that you come back next week for another battle in the Pokemon Premier League. Let me know in the comments if you all would like some sort of guided meditation where I take it a little bit more seriously, and the goal is not to impart the darkness into each of you. I would be happy to record that, and maybe you can listen to it as you're drifting off or as you're driving a car and just relax and take your hands off the wheel and it's the future, so the car takes over with the automatic driving and it's all good, it's all smooth. Ah, that would be so nice, wouldn't it? Alas, that's not where we are here. I really like these after battle interludes because I end up vamping a little bit. I'm just sitting here in the dark recording, but 
you guys are just like hanging in here with me and that's really cool. I hope each of you have an amazing night. And I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.